So let's return to that meeting at the White House on the evening of December 18. That night, a group showed up at the White House, including Sidney Powell, retired Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, and former Overstock.com CEO Patrick Byrne. After gaining access to the building from a junior White House staffer, the group made their way to the Oval Office. They were able to speak with the president by himself for some time until White House officials learned of the meeting. What ensued was a heated and profane clash between this group and President Trump's White House advisors, who traded personal insults, accusations of disloyalty to the president, and even challenges to physically fight. The meeting would last over six hours, beginning here in the Oval Office, moving around the West Wing, and many hours later, ending up in the president's private residence. The select committee has spoken with six of the participants, as well as staffers who could hear the screaming from outside the Oval Office. What took place next is best told in their own words, as you will see from this video. Did you believe that it was going to work, that you were going to be able to get to see the president uh, without an appointment? I had no idea. Uh, in fact, you did get to see the president without an appointment. We did. How much time did you have alone with the president? And I say alone. You had other people with you, but right. from his aides before the crowd came running. Uh, probably no more than 10 or 15 minutes. Was in that... In I bet Pat Cipollone set a new land speed record. I got a call either from Molly or Cushman that I need to get to the Oval Office. So that was the first point that I had recognized. Okay, there was nobody in there from the White House. Mark's gone. What's going on right now? I opened the door and I walked in. I saw General Flynn. I saw Sidney Powell sitting there. I was not happy to see the people in the Oval Office. Explain why. Well, again, I, I don't think they were providing. Well, first of all, the overstock person, I, I've never known never, never who this guy was. Actually, the first thing I did, I walked in, I looked at him, and I said, who are you? And he told me. I don't think, I don't think any of these people were providing the president with good advice. And so I, I, I didn't understand how they had gotten in. In the short period of time that you had with the president, did uh, uh, he seem receptive to the presentation that you were making? He was very interested in hearing particularly about the FISA finding and the terms of 13848 that apparently nobody else had bothered to inform him of. And I was asking, I'd like you to claim the Democrats were working with Hugo Chavez, <laughs> Venezuelans, and whomever else, and at one point, uh, General Flynn took out a diagram that supposedly showed IP addresses all over the world, and or IP, who, was, who was communicating with whom via the machines, and some comment about like Nest thermostats being hooked up to the internet. So it's been reported that during this meeting, Ms. Powell talked about Dominion voting machines and made various election fraud claims that involve foreign countries such as Venezuela, Iran, and China. Is that accurate? Sure. Was the meeting tense? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, it was not a casual meeting. Explain. I mean, at times there were people shouting at each other, hurling insults at each other. Um, it wasn't just sort of people sitting around on a couch, like chit chatting. Do you recall whether he raised to Ms. Powell the fact that she and the campaign had lost all of the 60 cases that they had brought in litigation? Yes, he raised that. And what was the response? I don't remember what she said. I don't think it was a good response. Cipollone and Hirschman and uh, whoever the other guy was showed nothing but contempt and disdain uh, of the president. Yeah, I remember the three of them were really sort of forcefully attacking me verbally. <laughs> um, Eric, Derek, and we were pushing back and we were asking one simple question. As a, as a general matter, where is the evidence? 
So what response did you get when you asked Ms. Powell and her colleagues where's the a variety of responses based on my current recollection, including, you know, I can't believe you would say something like, you know, things like this, like, what do you mean where's the evidence? You should know, you know, and, but things like that, or you know, a disregard, I would say, a general disregard for the importance of actually backing up what you say with facts. And you know, then there was discussion of, well, you know, we don't have it now, but we will have it or whatever. I mean, if if it had been me sitting in his chair, I would have fired all of them that night and had them escorted out of the building. But Deborah and I both challenged what she was saying, and she says, "Well, the judges are corrupt," and I was like, "Everyone, every single case that you've done in the country, you guys lost. Every one of them is corrupt, even the ones we appointed." And what? I'm being nice. I was much more harsh to her. So one of the other things that's been reported that was said during this meeting was that President Trump told White House lawyers, Mr. Hirschman and Mr. Cipollone, that they weren't offering him any solutions, but Ms. Powell and others were. So why not try uh, what Ms. Powell and others were proposing? Do you remember anything along those lines being said by President Trump? I do. That sounds right. I think that it got to the point where the screaming was... Completely, completely out there. I mean, again, people walk in, it was late at night, it had been a long day, and what they were proposing, I thought was nuts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna categorically describe it as you guys are not tough enough. Or maybe I put it another way, you're a bunch of pussies. Excuse the expression, but that that's I I'm almost certain the word was used. Flynn screamed at me that I was a quitter and everything. He kept on standing up and turning around and screaming at me. And then at a certain point, I had it with him. So I yelled back. I'd rather come over or sit your effing ass back down. The president and the White House team went upstairs to the residence, but to the... Um, uh, public part of the residence, you know, the big, the big parlor where you can have meetings in the conference room. Oval. They call that the yellow oval? Yes, exactly. The yellow oval office. I always called it the upper. Um, and I'm not exactly sure where the Sydney group went. I think maybe the Roosevelt room. And I stayed in the cabinet room, which is kind of cool. I really like that. All, my, all by myself. At the end of the day, we landed where we started the meeting, at least from a structural standpoint, which was Sidney Powell was fighting, Mike Flynn was fighting. They were looking for avenues that would enable, that would result in President Trump remaining President Trump for a second term. The meeting finally ended after midnight. Here are text messages sent by Cassidy Hutchinson during and after the meeting. As you can see, Ms. Hutchinson reported that the meeting in the West Wing was unhinged. The meeting finally broke up after midnight during the early morning of December 19. Cassidy Hutchinson captured the moment of Mark Meadows escorting Rudy Giuliani off the White House grounds to, quote, make sure he didn't wander back into the mansion. 